guys, this is Calera Hudson of While They Play Designs. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this folded Pico hem. As you can see, this hem is attached to the top of this sock and it's worked up and then over and it's tacked down as you bind off the hem on the inside or the wrong side of this sock. And it's also worked in combination with a yarn over bind off which is a nice stretchy bind off, which allows you to pull this sock over your foot to wear it. And the yarn used in this sock pattern, I will link to in the description for this video. So you'll know where to get that yarn. And I'll also link to where you can uh, purchase this pattern. But for demonstrative purposes, I'm going to show this technique to you guys on a worsted weight yarn. That way you can actually see better what I'm doing as I'm working this um, hem. So I have a worsted weight sock here that I've started. And at this point, I'm ready to join my yarn for my hem. And of course you can use the same color, but I'm just gonna show it to you with this contrast color. So it's a little easier for you to see the stitches that I'm gonna be working into. So I've worked up to the point where I'm gonna add that hem in this first stitch. I did want to point out to you guys before you do this hem on a pair of socks or a small dimension project, if you are using a set of DPNs, you'll want to just go ahead and transfer your stitches onto a circular needle like this. That way it gives you a little more room because you're going to be working the piece of fabric that you're going to be hemming, you're going to fold it over and then attach it to the back or the wrong side of your sock. So you want lots of room here. You don't want to have a bunch of DPNs just hanging around in your work. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is grab a locking stitch marker. Okay, and I'm going to use that locking stitch marker to go ahead and mark the very first row, or sorry, the very first stitch of that last row that I worked of my sock, because I'm going to be working into that later. I'll let that fall to the inside of my sock. Now, I'm going to pull out our back needle, and I'm going to drop my working yarn from my sock and just tuck, tuck that into the sock, and then I'll grab my contrast color yarn. And I'm simply going to knit five rows in the round. So we're just going to have five rounds of stockinette. And I will meet you when I get to the end of the fifth round. Okay, so I've completed those five rounds of stockinette. And now I'm ready to do my eyelet round, which is what's going to create that pico shape. But in order to do this eyelet round, you need to have a stitch count in your project that's divisible by two stitches. And the reason for that is because we're going to be doing a yarn over, knit two together, all the way around our stitches. So if you do have an even number in your particular pattern that you're working, you can simply uh, knit two stitches together at the beginning to go to an even number. So I have 40, 36 stitches in this pattern. So that will work for this eyelet row. So I'm going to start with a yarn over and a knit two together. And I'm just going to work that repeat all around this round. Okay, so now I've completed that eyelet row or eyelet round of yarn over knit two together. And now I'm just going to knit another five rounds in stockinette. So whatever number you decide to go with on your sock, that's the same number that you're going to knit in the round above your eyelet round. Okay, so I've completed those five rounds above that eyelet round. And now I'm ready to fold this cuff uh, down and tack it down to the inside of my sock. So before we do that, we're actually going to want to flip this sock inside out so we can see the inside of the sock where we'll be tacking down our hem. And the pin that we use to mark that first stitch from our old color is actually going to help you 
know which side you need to be looking at for this. And we're going to be working with the stitches that are facing us from this hem. So you'll load up those stitches on your front needle. And then we're going to go ahead and grab our working yarn. And then we'll unload this needle to work with. Now we'll flip back and take a look at that first stitch that we marked. That stitch is right here. And we're actually going to be picking up the pearl bumps in our old color. So that's why I have these two contrasting colors so you can see these stitches better. So instead of working into the stitch that we marked, it's actually going to be the first pearl bump that was worked. So this bump right here. And if you look at it this way, the previous color, which is in pink, these appear to be little smiles, little upside down U's. And then in our new color for the hem, we have loops that are going over like a rainbow shape. So we're going to be picking up the pink loops that look like a smile. So there's our first loop just below the stitch we marked right there. We're going to go in with our right hand needle from top to bottom and lift that loop. And we're going to place it onto the end of our left hand needle. So we've picked up that, that stitch, that pearl bump. Now we're going to pick up our working yarn. And we're going to yarn over our needle. We're going to keep that first yarn over pretty tight. And then we're going to knit two together. One of those stitches is going to be our hem stitch. And then the second stitch is that smile stitch that we picked up. So we'll knit those together. And then we're going to pass that yarn over over the knit two together stitch. So we've bound off one stitch and tacked one stitch down to the inside of our sock. Now we're going to repeat that by folding back to the inside of our work. And you can tell which stitch we worked into because it's stretched out right here. So we know the next smiley, the next smile stitch is right there. Hopefully you can see that okay. Get that into focus. There we go. There's our next smile stitch. And remember to go in top to bottom, pick that up place it onto your left hand needle. Now our repeat begins again, yarn over, knit two together, again one hem stitch with our smile stitch. And now we're going to bind off two stitches. So we're going to insert our left hand needle into the second stitch on our needle, pass it over the first, and then the second stitch pass over the first. Okay, so we're going to repeat that again turn to the wrong side of our work, go into the next smile. Remember this one was already worked into, it's stretched out. So go to the next smile stitch, pick that up from top to bottom, place that on our left hand needle. And now the repeat starts yarn over, knit two together, and then bind off two stitches, just like so. And then we'll continue to work this, go into the next smile stitch, lift it up and place it on the left hand needle, yarn over, knit two together, bind off two. And to make it go quicker, you can insert your left hand needle purlwise through the two last stitches and then carefully bind those off over the first stitch. That's just a quicker way to get this done. It'll make it go a little bit faster. So place that Smile stitch on your left hand needle, yarn over, knit two together, and then bind off those two stitches. And then we will work this all the way across this front needle. And when we get to the end, I'll show you how to switch over to your back needle. Okay, so we've reached about two stitches from the end of this front needle. And as you can see, it gets, a, it's getting a little difficult to round this corner of our sock. So what you can do at this point is just pull 
that needle through those two stitches. And then you can go ahead and place it on that back needle and work from that back needle now. And that just makes it a little more comfortable so you can actually see the stitches a little bit better that you're gonna be picking up. But once you get to that point, you're gonna go ahead and continue picking up those smile stitches. So we see this one's already been picked up. So we'll go into this one, lift that stitch, place it on the left hand needle, yarn over, knit two together and bind off two stitches. Again, lift that smile stitch, place it on the left hand needle, yarn over, knit two together, bind off two stitches. And we'll go ahead and work this all the way to the last stitch on our back needle. Okay, so I've reached the last three stitches on my needle. So again, I'm gonna insert my needle into the top of that smile stitch in my previous color, place that on the left-hand needle, yarn over, knit two together, and bind off two stitches. Okay, and then we have our second to last smile stitch here. Lift that up, place it on the left-hand needle, yarn over, knit two together, bind off two stitches. And now we're to our very last stitch on our needle. So this one's gonna be a little trickier, but we're gonna go ahead and rotate our work. And there you can see is that last smile stitch. Let me get this where you guys can see it a little better. So we can see this was the, the smile stitch we already worked into. This is our last smile stitch right here. So that's a little tricky to see because it's a tight, a tighter stitch. And then we're just gonna place that on our left hand needle. Make sure our yarn, working yarn isn't in the way. Yarn over and then knit the hem stitch with the smile stitch and now bind off two stitches. And now we are done with that hem and our needle. So we're just gonna elongate this final loop and then we'll go ahead and cut our yarn, leaving a little tail for weaving in. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and draw that tail through that loop. And we're not gonna pull it too tight because we're gonna work into that in just a little bit. Okay, so at this point, you can remove your stitch marker and we're done with our needles. And now I'm gonna get these two tails out of my way so I can weave those in later. I'm just gonna knot those together, set those out of the way. And now to complete this hem, just a way of invisibly joining you can see this is where we started our hem and this is where we ended it. So there's quite a separation there. So what we're gonna do is just weave that tail onto a tapestry needle. And then we're just going to pass it through from bottom to top in this first V, which is our first bound off stitch. And we'll pull that through. And then we're gonna go back down from where we came out of right here into that loop and pull that through and tighten it up. So basically what we've done is just a duplicate stitch to join, join that round that we completed. And then at this point, I would actually go ahead and just knot it together with the tail from the beginning of our hem. And then we can weave both of those into the sock. But at this point, we are done with that hem, and I'll just go ahead and flip my sock right side out and show you how that looks. Let's tuck these little ends back into my sock. So that is our Pico hem finished.
And as you can see on the inside, we just have a nice stretchy bind off that we used to tack that Pico hem down to the inside of our sock. This will just be able to stretch over your foot really well, over your heel of your foot. So it has a lot of give there. And then you can see that Pico hem just lays nice and flat. And obviously with this technique, you guys can feel free to work a different number of rows. On this fingering weight sock, I actually used the same five rows and then my eyelet row and then another five rows before I tacked it down. And so that gives me a shorter uh, Pico hem. So on worsted weight, you may wanna do fewer rows. It's up to you. But that is how we create the folded Pico hem. I hope this video and technique helps you guys out. Thanks so much for watching.